Hello again for friends. Now today we are going to do the work on this 1973, I say 1973, um, Fender Jazz Bass. Uh, what an amazing looking guitar this is. Now there's a couple of changes to the way I'm going to do things. To keep the guitar basically as it is right now without altering anything that could alter anything originally if you get what I'm saying. Uh, I'm going to do one thing on here slightly differently and that is that little ding we says we had on the fret one two three four five six on the sixth fret and you'll see it right next to where is it there you go it's here just above my finger it's round about here if you want to zoom in and have a look at that there's a ding in there and I was going to fill that with rosewood dust and super glue and sand it over and smooth it all off now I'm not going to do that I'm going to use a method I use now and again when there's an indentation in the wood and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put basically a wet bandage over there just over that one fret I'm going to soak some five millimeter thick felt in water I'm going to put it just over that fret I'm going to let the water soak into that wood and it'll spring the grain back out it will come back to level rather than me fill it with something uh, I don't want to alter anything structurally with this guitar I want to keep it absolutely totally original so it means putting the bandage on there for three or four hours letting the wood grain soak back up, it'll come back to its natural position. The, uh, what, what I'm going to do is when I put the little bandage on there, it is actually a bandage and a patch, I'll put the patch on there. Uh, I'll show you what I'll use. I use this a lot. Let's have a piece here. Just a piece of felt, about that thick. I'll soak that in water, put that on that one fret, and I'll tape round with some um, 3M tape, which won't, it's very low tack, so it won't damage anything, but it'll create a seal in there. We'll keep the moisture in there about four, five, six hours. It'll soak in, bring the wood grain back up. Everything else uh, will be normal. I'm just about to check the electric. I'm going to take the strings off. I've been across all the frets, but there's definitely one high fret. Once I've got the strings off and I have leveled the neck, um, I will go across with the not straight edge, make sure the neck is straight, and then I'll go across with the fret rocker again and we'll check any of the frets. Let's see if we're rocking. We'll do three at a time, and if we get a rock, it means the middle one is high. If it's high, we need to adjust it. Now, if only if we have five or less frets need doing, it will be covered in the intensive setup. An intensive setup on a bass is £15 cheaper than on a guitar. On a guitar, I'd be charging £75 for an intensive setup. On a bass, I charge £60. A regular setup on a guitar is £50, and a regular setup on a bass is only £40. So I do that for acoustics and basses. I do 40, 60 rather than 50, 75. It's good value. There's less work to do on an acoustic or a bass. Uh, I'm going to remove all the covers. I've already removed the actual bridge cover because the reason the strings were sounding dull, as mentioned before, is because this piece of uh, whatever it is, some kind of styrofoam in there, it's glued to that, and that sits on top of the strings and it makes them sound dull. I, myself, if this was my base, I would remove that. Well, I'd leave the cover off anyway. Um, but the reason that got, when that guy came round to check this, uh, when he went round, to, went round to the owner's house and says, oh, the strings sound dead, because that was on there, you need to remove that. The strings are sounding fine at the moment. Don't know if you can hear that, but they're ringing out. This will get, because this is having the intensive setup, it will have some extras. We'll get round to polishing all the metal, both covers, this cover and the cover over the pickup, or uh, yeah, over the neck pickup, or the, or the middle pickup, should we say. Uh, I'll be cleaning all the metal, I'll be dusting off all the pickups, I'll be checking the pickups as well. There's one thing I have noticed on one of the pole pieces on one of these pickups is it does have an indentation. I'm just going to remove this cover just to show because this is the first time this guitar has been out of the case since I picked it up. So I'm just going to remove this cover. But like I say, there are a couple of nicks on this guitar but nothing major it is not pristine but it is not it's still in what I would consider to be very good to excellent condition there's a small nick I've just noticed there's a couple here and there in, in the lacquer where it's probably I just had a tie up now I have seen this guitar not seen it in action but I've seen photographs of this guitar in action in the early 70s with the original owner um, and there you go now if you look at this pole piece is on this pickup here that pole piece has got a groove in there somewhere don't know why that's happened that is there on the guitar it could just be something stuck on there I, don't, I won't know until I've got the strings off and I've checked it properly 
Just showing all the imperfections on the base before I start work on it. There's a tiny little indentation there, just below my finger. And there's another one just here. These ones are for the screw holes for the cover plate. Uh, there's nothing I can really do with that. I'm going to leave that. I'm not going to do anything on it because if I'd put some super glue in there, it'd just make a mess. It's not going to detract from the value of the guitar or the way it plays. End of the day, guitar is as it is. So I'm going to test the electrics. I'm going to get the strings off. I will show you the frets close up. If you see the frets, they've got some a lot of tarnishing on there. They've got some green tarnishing. They will get a polish. The fingerboard will be oiled. It will have a complete setup. I shall remove the neck so I can work on the neck easier, keep the body from harm. I will also clean up the tuners, top and bottom. I'll be putting on the same strings because they are flat wound strings, they're not going to sound any different. Uh, I will give them a wipe and a clean, might even go over there with some fast fret. Uh, the main work on this is going to be on the neck, all being well worked to do anything to the electrics, but if the electrics do need attention, that will also be done. So without further ado, I'm going to remove some things, I'm going to get the strings off, I'm going to check the electrics, um, and I will show you how we go on soon. Right, so first I thought I would show the guitar uh, the guitar electrics working. There's no crackle on the pots. And I'll show you this volume on everything. No crackle on the pots, which is good. It means the electrics are fine. I will still go in there and check. I'm going to set the balance of the pickles to equal on each. bridge pickup I believe let's see no just a neck pickup on this one's off I'm nice to try it with the other pick pickups the other way around middle or neck pickup as we call it off bridge pickup on both pickups on four. There you go, blend. So we know the pickups are working fine, we know the electrics are working fine. We don't really need to go in there. I will go in there just for a matter of course uh, to check everything. Next job I'm going to do is I'm going to remove all the strings. We're going to straighten the neck. I'll remove the neck, make it a lot easier. It needs slightly resetting anyway because the strings are slightly up this way. The neck needs to turn just slightly that way. Because you see there we're quite close to the edge whereas here we're quite far away. There is an indentation in there. I'll show you all the indentations and imperfections with the neck once I've got it off of the guitar because then it will help determine how it's viewed by prospective buyers. Right, I'm going to remove the neck on camera because it needs adjusting slightly. It needs to move one way or the other. Got the correct size screwdriver head. We don't want anything wobbling about. We don't want to strip any of the screws. So there we go. We're not uber tight anyway, that's good. But we will get them in right. I've had instances where removing a neck has chipped some paint, so I'm going to remove this so carefully. It's good to get everything on camera. Uh, the neck will be a lot easier to work on once it is off the guitar, and it will also minimise the chances of me damaging the body by dropping a tool on it. Now, you may notice that I don't have tools I have to reach over the guitar to get. I did when I first started, when I was inexperienced, and I learned the hard way that that's not the way to do things. Um, so never have any tools that you have to stretch over a guitar for. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this up carefully. This neck should come straight off without any problem, and it has. There you go, absolutely beautiful. That's great, but there's no... No um, shim in there, which is good. We have the neck. I'm going to look for a date mark on the neck. Can't see anything. Uh, I've looked at this before, haven't I, in the last part of the video. I was hoping to find a year on there, but, you know, 
you can't see one so I'm going to put this body back inside a big guitar case out of the way guitar case is right here we will replace the lid and we'll lock it up as you do that's fantastic and now we have the neck to look at everything on camera I'm going to move we'll turn these around these are a little bit stiff for tuners anything I'm going to do on the bass neck now I can do off the guitar now we're going to show here that there is wear on these frets that doesn't worry me in the slightest it's a little bit of wear it's nothing major I can't I can't really feel it with my thumb um, I'm going to show the indentations on the neck there are a couple of scratches here normal play there is an indentation there everything else looks pretty okay there are some scratches down at this end here just right on the edge there they look like file marks but it could just be play marks and there's also on this side here this is all for selling purposes a little bit of scratching here on the binding just there you probably won't even see it it's good to point these things out then get them on camera where are we we're looking in this region it's nothing to be alarmed with it's just the way it is just on this edge here frets themselves look pretty okay like I say a couple of, couple of marks on the edge of a rosewood bottom edge along these three or four frets here it's great to get all this on camera tiny tiny indentation there I'm going over this base with a fine tooth comb little tiny bit of a gap there between the binding and the neck I'm going over this with a fine tooth comb just so if anyone does buy this we've got no there's no comeback just there a little bit on that little bit of a tiny gap there I'm not even going to attempt to fill that it's not um, structural it's not going to cause a problem aha I've never seen this before but there's some cracking on the binding a little there a little there a little there and a little there um, everything else looks pretty okay a little tiny indentation at the end of the neck there just below my index finger on this part where the ridge is best to get these all on camera like I say a little bit of wear on the frets but nothing major I'm going to go across I'm going to polish these uh, any little bits on the edge in there on the rosewood just point it all out there and there that indentation I talked about is there I'm going to put the wet bandage on that piece and we'll hopefully that will float back out a good success using that method before looking at the headstock it looks looks to be fine let's put the headstock there you go I know it's upside down but it's the way I can reach the camera there are the tuners we'll get a little bit of uh, lube in there a little bit of grease or a bit of Vaseline or whatever we'll clean everything up I'll check these for tightness may need to loosen a couple they are a little bit tight and here you go that is uh, if that's a mark that is under the lacquer it is not an indentation the neck itself looks beautiful let me go nice and steady there you go and I'm going to show the headstock but not the headstock sorry the heel which is there I don't know if it's the right way up is it the right way up yep I will go over this with a magnifying glass to see if I can see a year and there is the truss rod not tested the truss rod yet I have no reason to believe that there is a problem with the truss rod so I'm just going to nick it back a quarter turn it loosens fine let me get <clears throat> there you go you can see the whole neck there I'll just check the straightness of the neck right okay it's got a little bit of relief in there let me tighten it to remove the relief and we can see that it's working fine no pressure on there at the moment right that's it that's a quarter turn let's see what that what that has done if anything right that has straightened the neck the neck is now well, it's not exactly straight there's a little bit of background in there now so I've tightened that a little bit too much we'll go back an eighth of the turn 
and we'll just wait for the neck to settle. Right, that neck is now absolutely straight. I will move the camera shortly just to show that. We'll need to get everything right. We need to get evidence of everything on the camera. There's no light showing through behind that. Bear with me, I'm being very, very thorough on this job because it's an expensive guitar. And I'm not charging a lot of money for doing it, so uh, I need to make sure that everything is recorded. You know, we don't want any, uh, anything going wrong, do we? We don't want any accidents. Right, so there. I should be able to see beneath that. Okay, there's the tiniest of gap under there. I will bring the camera around in a minute and show you all where we are. I need to do a 30 tooth of a turn on that truss rod. That's beautiful. That is a straight, in fact, so that's too much. So we're going to go back. You can't get them absolutely straight when they're this old. You're going to have a tiny little bit of relief or a little bit of bow in there. But that, for all intents and purposes, is fantastic. So that is as straight as I could get this neck. So I'm going to bring the camera around. And you're looking at the top of the neck. Uh, and this steel beam on the top, or the aluminium beam, we're looking for gaps underneath. And you've got the tiny, so that neck is straight. That's good because now we can do the level checking. Do apologise for me oiking the camera around, but needs must. So that neck is as straight as we can get it. Yeah, that looks good to me. I could be really nitpicky and move it a tiny, tiny bit more, I suppose. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the fret rocker. Now we determine that the neck is straight, which is what we call a not straight edge. The notches go over the fret so we can lay the perfectly flat bottom of this measuring device, or this not straight edge, onto the wood of the neck to determine whether it's straight or not. We've determined that it is now straight and we're going to go across. Now I'm going to show you the frets. And I'll show you why we need work on these frets. Look at the tarnishing and the green. Blah, 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 blah. We need to get rid of all that. We're also going to check the crowning state of the frets. They're a little bit flat in places. I'm not touching them. I'm not, I'm not charging for a fret job. If the frets are level, they're staying as they are. I'm not going to charge anything because if we start crowning these, you're looking at another 80 quid and we've got to do the lot. All I'm going to do is check that they are level. Let's get there. Here we go. Three at a time. If it rocks, one's high. Doing three areas, both the outsides in the centre. This is good, because none are rocking so far. So we're looking at a 90 minute job on this whole guitar, if we don't need to work on any frets. Uh, if I wasn't doing video, let's say two hours. If I wasn't doing video, I could get it done in about an hour and 15 minutes, the whole lot. Probably hour, let's say hour and a half, because we're going to have strings on as well, we've got to do the intonation. I'll be looking at 90 minutes for a complete setup. We've got no rock. This is really good news, by the way. I'll be looking at 90 minutes for a complete setup. Probably 75 minutes for a normal setup, player setup. 90 minutes, 205 minutes on an intensive setup. There's one high fret. Yeah, that's high in two places there and there. I need to file that flat and recrown it. And there, that side. That's two frets need attention. Three, listen to the rock. That's pretty good. Three frets need attention. We will tape up the fingerboard, we will file them flat, uh, file them down to where we need to be. Once that's done, it will be flat and we need to put that curve back in again. So we've got three frets to work on. So that warrants an intensive setup. You get five frets done free, inclusive in that price. Um, we're going to need a complete polish, we'll oil the neck, blah -de blah blah blah. So now we're determined I don't need to work on three frets, I will semi clean them up. And how I'm going to clean them up is, I will take a protective, it's called a, a fretboard protector, when I find it, here we go. And I'm going to remove that tarnishing with steel wool, finest grade steel wool. Um, once that's done, I'm going to move on to the next fret. You know, I can't remember it. Brilliant. The brilliance of live video. OK, 
Get over here faster, thank you. Once we use the wide one, what we do is, it's called a fret protector. We'll place that over the fret, and then it enables us to be able to polish the fret without marking the wood. Do I have any, I don't have any wild wood out at the moment, so I'm gonna to have to break a bit off, just cut a piece off. I'll show you how that works, because I'm gonna crack on and get that done before I put any oil on the neck. As you all know, I am predominantly a neck and fret specialist, it's what I concentrate on because if the neck's right, the guitar can be right, if the neck's not right, the guitar will never be right. So it's of the utmost importance that the neck is straight, if it's not straight, if the, the truss rod works so we can get it straight, and if that's the case, then the next most important part of the guitar are the frets, are they level, and are they crowned properly. So this is how we clean, polish a fret. You see that gubbins, we'll bend that round to the radius, and we just take the steel wall and then polish over it. Now I dare say this base could benefit for a complete because there's some wear on this fret, but that's as good as I'm gonna get these. We're just doing the posture, don't need leveling. If we wanted to be picker, we could um, we could absolutely recrown these. That's basically where they've gone a bit flat on top, we'll put that crown back in, then we'll polish them up with five different grits of sandpaper. That job on its own is uh, 85 pounds, so we're gonna leave that for now. We're just gonna get them level, get this base playable, and get it sellable. So I'm gonna crack on, get all these frets done. That's we spoke along going off, don't worry about it, the wife's in the kitchen. Um, so we're not gonna worry about that. Um, I will come back and show you how we got on again later. Right, I have the frets polished, but there's more work to be done on this neck. Um, I've also cleaned the neck by taking the steel wall. And what we do is, you've got nigh on 50, 40 plus years of grime collected on this rosewood. And what we do is, we remove the steel wall. We just go this way, we follow the grain, and we just take it and remove all the crud that's in there. There's going to be crud right on the edges of where these frets are as well. So we've got to try and get in there without scuffing the wood. So we're just lightly with that and then we just come across like so. And now we're gonna clean properly is we're gonna take some mineral oil. This is basically, we call it lemon oil, but it's not lemon oil. Lemon oil will rip your wood to pieces. It's specially formulated mineral oil, sp uh, formulated for rosewood and ebony fretboards. And what we do is, it serves two purposes. One, we let it soak in for half an hour. And what it does is, one, it nourishes the wood and two, any crud on there it will flow out it will raise up and once that's done we'll give it a wipe with the cloth which will remove the gunk and we'll finish off again to remove everything with a steel wool and then we'll give it another light coating the whole fingerboard just to nourish the wood again give it two coats of this uh, so that will take you know there's hour and a half in there it's not a great load of work um I probably misquoted my times for a for an intensive setup because when you're doing stuff like this as well and you're doing the frets, you're going to be looking at least two hours at the very least. Uh, I have three frets to level and re-crown, which is quite an intensive job, but I'm not going to do that just yet. I'm also not going to do the cleaning yet as I'm doing right now because what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the bandage on there to try and remove or get rid of this little indentation in the fingerboard. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna move the camera back to its normal position because it is a lot easier to explain and show what I'm talking about. So, back in the normal position, you'll see the one I've oiled and cleaned is that fret there. It looks darker than all the others because these have all had a bit of a rub with steel wool. But I'm talking at the moment about this little indentation here. There you go, can you see that? Between my fingers there. What I would normally do is, it's not super deep, but what I would, I would I could do is, or what I'd normally do if I had a few of them, I'd fill them in, in with uh, get some rosewood dust, drop it in there, I'd drop some super glue in there, let it dry, once it's dried, file over it, um, then I'd sand with the grain and you wouldn't see it again. But because this is such an old guitar, it is a vintage guitar, uh, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna try and coax that indentation back out just by using um, some moisture. It's a trick I've been using for a long time. Um, I'm going to put a bandage on there uh, and I'm going to wrap the bandage with some tape 
uh, some really low tech tape so it doesn't remove any of the finish on the guitar and I'm going to leave it on there for two or three hours and once that's done I can come back and I can do what I said I was going to do regarding the cleaning of this fingerboard and once that's done I'll clean the slots on the nut as well we'll just tidy that up a little bit just give them a little get a file in there just remove any of that crud we'll do the same with these tuners we'll move a crud on there <clears throat> and we'll start getting the guitar all back together so really now I've got the bandage on and that's sealed there's little more I can do on the neck as it is I could get some of this grime off these um, tuners which I'm going to do off camera chances are it'll be better if I remove these so I might do that see how we go on with them on the guitar you see there's always crud build up over there that needs to come off I could get a little bit of WD-40 on a rag and just wipe that over it that'll start to disperse itself then WD-40 is not going to work anything because it will evaporate in time well it won't evaporate but it will soak in to the mechanism itself um, it's not going to damage the varnish or anything uh, what else have got to tell you why I'm waiting for this to uh, do its magic which will take about three four hours I could get on I'm probably going to get on with polishing these two covers here uh, I use a, a nice but I'll just use some metal polish and a rag I won't use anything abrasive um, let me see what I have in fact I know what I have I have peak it's all I use and it's just finding out what drawer it's in I haven't got a clue can't see it anywhere uh, I do know that oh I do I, I do oh I'll tell you what else I have I will have some um, what the heck do you call it this could be in scratch remover this is great the car stuff talk to me help me out T cut that's the one I can't find my peak which is normally all I use for metal so I use some scratch remover some of this gubbins get a little bit on a rag we'll get that polish clean it all up same with these tuners just these parts of the tuners will polish up anything else to get a bit of steel wool on there not going to touch this not going to touch these areas just going to touch these polish those up um, and we'll get all these bits cleaned right I just wanted to show that uh, I am cleaning this fingerboard I wanted to show I've done about eight different eight different places on the fingerboard so far wiped clean that's soaked in mineral oil and just wiped with this cloth and show you how it works because this has got grime soaked in for I don't know how many years many many years now as a rule I oil a fingerboard twice a year on my guitars I recommend you do the same because you get rid of that finger grime and sweat all soaks in I'm just gonna I'm doing this on camera just to show you there you go done half a fingerboard look and there you go and that's the gubbins here all that black stuff is off this guitar and it was didn't look particularly dirty when it comes in I've got a bit of half a fingerboard to do yet now admittedly it looks fantastic now I've done it and all that grime is now off there so you're playing a clean fingerboard uh, bandage is still on take me on that long I'm going to do these ones now while I'm here I'll use a new area of the cloth just to show how it works so where we've been that's where we started there you go there you go so let's, let's move across let's use this little bit here and I've just got four or five frets to do here the one I've already done of these uh, I'm not expecting to get a great lot of muck off here but you see a lot of my work happens off camera you don't see it and you specifically and especially do not see the research I do when I'm looking to see what this is worth I've probably done six to eight hours research on this guitar but I'm not going to charge for I'm not getting paid for you know we need to bear these things in mind when we're you know then worked on I'm not complaining about it I love doing it uh, just saying you know and there you go and that's that area and not a great deal there there's some but there you go you see you just you know that's it but it does look fantastic now I'll have these for you to do when the bandage is off just wanted to show that um, absolutely fantastic I will now do a little bit of work on these I won't use steel wool I'm just going to use a cloth uh, and a little bit of uh, a tiny tiny bit of tea cut on a cloth and we'll get these all cleaned up I don't want to get any um, any gunk any oil or anything on the actual guitar itself on the lacquer even if we did we could wipe it off no problem it's just I'd rather not be doing that you know so gonna crack on back at this weird angle again I tried the um, 
the soaking in water bandage. Uh, it didn't work it's because I realised that is not an indentation, it's actually a crack in the wood. So what we're going to do is we're going to zoom in and we are going to do my original idea. We are going to fill it. So if you can see there, I've got a little pile of um, rosewood dust just there. You're not going to see this, it's going to be invisible. I have a little hole here, only a little crack. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill this in. It's like an S shape, just there. Don't know what you can see, hopefully you can see it. And all I'm going to do is just put in a little rosewood dust. I'm sorry about the voices in the other room, I've got someone. My wife is doing someone's drag locks today. She just drag lock maintenance. Right, so there we are with that. I'm a super glue. If I get an overspill, it's okay because we're going to file it flat or sand it flat anyway. But I just want a little drop of super glue there. Got the really runny stuff. That's all we need. That's gone well. And we're going to just put some more dust over there. And there you go. A little bit more super glue just on top. We've got that filled now. Now all I'm going to do is I'm going to take the file. I do this a lot. These are little filling jobs. I take maybe this is a bit too thick. See what we've got. Doesn't matter what kind of file I use. I've got a few cut files. These are about a number two cut. This will be fine. I'm going to try and go with this one. Take some steel wool, same stuff we did the polishing with earlier, and that hole has gone. Tumty tum. Take a small piece of sandpaper, 240 grit. Looking good. Like I said, I do apologise for voices in the other room, can't be avoided. This guy with the dreadlocks, he's got a voice like a foghorn. Take some, we could ignore that. I'm going to take some 400 grit now. You're not going to see this repair. It just makes a guitar look tidy. That's it, job done. Give it a little spray, a little bit of lemon oil there. I will show you the repair in a second. And that's it, all done. That's how quick it is to do that repair. We'll give it a wipe. Right then guys, let me show you. Wow, I'm having trouble finding the repair myself, there it is. Repairs next to my finger there. Let me just zoom out. And I'll turn the camera back around shortly. I'm having trouble finding the repair. There's the repair. Next to my finger just there. It's smooth as anything now. Move out of the way. I'll show you that again when the guitar's upright. That's the repair done. Um, don't even need to mention that. No one's ever going to know that has been repaired. Let me show you the repair now, I've got the camera back in the correct position. And there you go, that is where the indentation was, right there. I'm gonna move my hand out of the way. And that is as smooth as anything. It's repaired, there's no indentation there. Don't know how close I can get on this, because sometimes you get it close and it goes a little bit fu a little bit fuzzer. But the indentation is was here. That's gone now. 
So that net is looking fabulous, it's looking almost new again, isn't it? No marks from a tape where I put the bandage over earlier, never is. I've cleaned the tuning heads, I need to just alter and adjust these screws here just to make sure everything's okay. I've cleaned up this side, the outside of the tuning, uh, the string holders as well. Um, so this is more or less, well it is ready, it's ready to go back on the guitar. I'm going to make sure there's no bits sticking out here, a bit sloppy there. Uh, I'm going to go in with a magnifying glass and just see, I've got a great magnifying glass, look at this. Do you think to that? Don't know what you saw there. I'm just going to have a look, see if I can make out the date. I don't think I can because I've looked before. I could take a picture and enlarge it and blah de blah 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 and zoom in and everything. There's no date on there that I can see. There's a name. It's like, I don't even know what the name is, can't tell from here. I think I looked at it before. But there is no date stamp on there that I can see. It's got an inspection, it's got a number 18 on there, an inspection, it's got a signature. And it's got these letters which are, is that an A? You know, what can I tell you? There's a stamp there but I can't really see it. So there's nothing that tells me the exact year. Now the serial number seems to say that it is an early model. I think you said it was a, did you say it was a 72 or a 73 or did I say it was a 73 or a 74? But the serial number, wherever, I don't know where the serial number is now, I've got it somewhere. Um, maybe it's in the guitar pack. I'm sure it dates it to the earlier of the two years that we were given. So I will try and corroborate that story um, and we shall take it from there. But I would say it is at least a 1973. Uh, chances are, if it was bought in 73 as well, it could have been manufactured in 72. The earlier it is, the more money it's worth. I still think for valuation, for selling purposes, uh, I would not take, personally, I would not take less than... Uh, We've got to be looking at two and a half thousand pounds, haven't we? I know one sold the other week for nineteen hundred pounds on eBay UK. Now, after eBay fees and that, you're going to be looking at you know, you'll get sixteen hundred and fifty quid, aren't you? Scandalous. Um, I would not really want to be selling this for less than two thousand two hundred pounds. Two thousand two hundred pounds might be all right. Now, if I'm, I don't know if I'm selling this or Lint is going to get someone else to sell it. I've got no idea. But if I was selling it, I would want some sort of seller's fee anyway. I won't be greedy. You know, I'm not going to look for anything stupid like 10% because that's too much. But I'm sure we could come to some kind of arrangement. I'd do all the work, take all the photographs, do all the advertising. I'd, and I would only sell it on one of these special eBay things where it's a pan to sell something. So that way you're not giving eBay a stupid amount of fees. Uh, that way the owner makes more and I'll make a little bit more for myself if I do sell it. So I'm going to crack on. I'm going to get this back on the guitar after I've cleaned the body up. I'm going to clean the body up, clean all the pots. Get all the electrics cleaned up. Um, I'll come back and show you a little bit of that and um, we can get it all boxed up ready to go home. With the neck completed, we can now move on to the body and I've already altered the height of the pickups. I've cleaned the pickups. Um, I'll give the guitar a wipe over and I'm just about to remove the ele electrics plate. Uh, I did just have a quick peek in there. I've removed the three screws and um, it looks fine in there. The pots look absolutely fine. I want to zoom in a little bit. Some people are going to complain about that. Look how he treats it. He's just laying it flop all over the place. You know what? Go away. So there we go. Um, very, very good pots. Very well made. Nice wiring. Good wiring. Very tidy. You wouldn't expect anything less. I don't know what pots they are. Um, you would imagine there's something pretty decent. with no markings on there. You'd imagine probably CTS or something like that. Uh, very good, nice big stamps in there. And they are stamped 032367, 250k, and 13773, 137733. It looks like the number on there. Fantastic. Uh, we're all 250k. Capacitor, little blue thing. Looks very nice. Uh, the dog's just walked in the room. I'm going to show him out and I'll come back in a second. So. I know all the electrics are working right. All I'm going to do is, I'm not going to alter anything, I'm just going to give it a little wipe inside. I'm not going to break anything, I'm not going to force anything. Looks very nice. And I'm going to go with a little squirt of service hole. 
switch cleaner inside its box just a little it doesn't even not even cracking or squeaking so I'm just going to give it a little just to give them a clean anyway I think my wife it doesn't need it well I'll tell you why shall I I say as far as I know it's never been done and this guitar is what 44 years old 45 years old nearly as old as me so away from the guitar little squirt inside each pot And there you go. I'm just going to give that a turn. And that's the pot's cleaned inside. If there was any crackle there, there's not going to be any now. I'm going to wipe around the area. Guitar body. Not too hard, we're not going to crack or smudge anything, do we? So I say this has likely never ever been off, ever. Do I need to remove the um, pickup guard? No, I don't think so. The wire, the solder in there, by the way, is a base plate on there. You can hear me tapping it there. It's like a brass plate. It's got all the earths soldered to that. Very, very nice. Could I hold it up and show you? I could. Am I going to do that? Yeah, I think I will. Very, very briefly. There you go. Can you see in there? That's all you're getting. So, yeah. Very, very nice. Make sure all the wires are out of the way. Everything's trapped. And that's it, we can put the screws back in. Or I may. I've got no reason to move that. Everything is working. But maybe there's something in there that will give an identity or give us some clue as to the actual year of manufacture. So I might as well, haven't I? Might as well have a look. There's a JF initial there in the neck pocket. Does anyone know what that means? Maybe you could tell me. Someone maybe is watching this video and will know that. I know what it means. Information on this, though you can find stuff out about it, so it's Information on the serial number is pretty sketchy. Most date it to, I would say this is a 73. It's definitely not a 74, could well be a 72. Most likely it is a 72. You know, the fact that this falls in the uh, parameters that say it could be a 72 makes you think it is a 72. And if it is a 72, it's worth that little bit more I don't know why it's worth any more. I don't know if it's a better year. I don't know if it's just because it's older. If it's a 72, it makes this guitar 46 years old. Wow, amazing. Should I move these knobs? I'm going to leave them exactly where they are. There, that is there. If that's there and that's there, then halfway is going to be. There's halfway. I'll leave it halfway there. Everything's nice. I know this video is going to be a bit long winded because I'm going to do it all in one rather than split it up because a potential buyer can actually watch this video and see what I've checked. And it's not having anything major. I mean, apart from the fret leveling, which I still yet to do, I've got all the work on my neck bar the three frets I need to level, which I'm going to do shortly. Uh, I like to put the screws back how they came out. I've probably got them mixed up anyway, it's no big deal. For them, the two outside ones are the ones that go in the middle of the pit guard. It totally slipped my mind, I had not done um, the three frets yet, I need to level. I've got two more screws here, and I don't know what they are for. There's one there, smaller than the rest, and there's one there, smaller than the rest. I'll be holding something in. Yeah, they're holding it in. Interesting. That's a different size screw to all the others. I have no idea why. Stick that one there. Well, still. 
So this is, will it have actual pickup routes, not like a strap where you've just got a great big rectangle hole all in this area. It's a little bit shoddy. Do, wow, really? Is that stuck? So they are also holding the scratch plate on. I'm going to get this off and I think, well, I didn't need to do that. I've plastic it before it'd be a nice piece of wood. I thought wrong. And there you go. Absolutely no reason to remove that whatsoever. Uh, I'm not even going to wipe under there. I am going to blow under there. Just wipe very, very gently. I don't want to disturb anything. Well, there you go. You've seen me waste some time there. I could stop the video rolling now, couldn't I? You think, well, I didn't need to do that. We'll just cut that bit out. I'm not going to have to leave it on there. What I will do is I'll get the, it back on off camera. There's no point in watching all of it. And um, we'll move on to doing, well, this is just about done. So we'll move on to getting the frets finished. Something else I've just noticed on this guitar body. There is a little nick there, a tiny little ding, which I've not seen before. Uh, just good to point these things out because it, when it comes to taking photographs for selling, I'll know where I am. So, could you drop this another half a mark and give it a 9 out of 10? Let me tell you now, 9 out of 10 is a good mark for a guitar 46 years old. I would rate this a, a 9 out of 10. You can't give it a 9 and a half. Um, even an 8 and a half out of 10 is a good score. There's a little ding, a little chunk out of this... Um, pole piece on the pickup. It's all double barred pickups. I don't know what the significance of that is. I don't know what difference it makes. I just imagine it gives you a better sound. Picks up more of the frequencies. I don't know. Um, but there you go. There it is. Let's see where we are with that. There you go. Beautiful, isn't it? How good is that? Really, really very nice. You know, you can't really go wrong with that, can you? Looks fantastic. Um, so I'm going to put this away. I'm not going to get to polishing it. Polishing this is going to make no difference. Uh, when you're selling this, you want people to see it as it is. It's all scuffed around the finger, but around the scratch plate here, which is going to be. It's been played. A couple of marks where the cover... I would personally leave the covers off. This is my guitar. I know it looks good with them on, but you need, definitely need that dampener taken out that rests on strings here because it does deaden the strings it probably sits even in front of that it definitely has to be kept off um i just think if they look a bit they play a lot better without the cover on that cover you could leave on if you wanted to i personally would not do that the neck pocket has got a j and an f in there i don't know what it means it's got some other writing that's been underneath but it's been sprayed over there is no shim in there there's no chip in the neck fits okay that hole is a little bit wider than it ought to be, in my opinion. But I imagine the guitar was built like that. If you want to have a look there. I'm not going to go and fill that in and redrill. You know, that's as it was made. So it's going to be absolutely fine. I also need to adjust the neck a little one way anyway. So that is it. I'm going to move on to doing the fret levelling. Without really explaining anything in great detail. I've um, got three frets here. I'm going to level. And two there. I'm going to level five altogether. I have three files. Crowded file, concave, is it concave and convex? Curved, it's got a curve in it for finishing off removing any burrs. I also have another crowning file and I'm going to use a flat file. Do I, have I not got my flat so I've got a flat file like that? Number three cut, don't need anything major. Problem with these frets is they're high in certain places. They're only a very, fra only a fraction of a millimetre. So all we need to do take a file we've got a cleaning cloth here always have a clean file give it a wipe remove any burrs and all we're going to do is just gently just give it a couple of strokes that's it it's as much as you need to do check again it's a little bit high but it's fine there now right on the edge clean the file Check again. It's 
a tiny bit, clean the file. We're talking oomphs of millimetres here. You don't have to go gung-ho, you don't have to go crazy. You're just looking to get level with these two around it. Then you check that one, make sure it hasn't made this one high because we do three at a time, absolutely fine, absolutely fine. That fret is now level. We have leveled this small area about a centimetre. Now what we've done is we've made it flat. I'm going to put that curve back in. There's a few ways we can do this. I prefer to use my three-edge file. It's got ground flat edges so we can't damage the guitar. And as I come across, I roll it over. Then I roll it over more to put that arc back in. I've got two of these files. This is a, a, a bit of a coarse cut. And the best way to do this, you see I'm going across and I'm rolling over. I'm rolling away from you now. And again this side. And the best way to do this and check that we're getting that right line because we want a thin line on the top because we want a sm only a small part of the string to touch the top of a fret. No more than half a millimetre. I'd say round about a third of a millimetre if possible. And I'll put a blue line on there. I shall clean the file. I don't know what you can see there. But you'll have to make do because I'm not moving the camera. And that's it, just nice strokes, nice easy strokes. I've got a nice thin blue line down the centre there. I will then move on to my fine file, more or less like very smooth. Three ground flat edges again so we can't damage the fingerboard. This is a two-way cutting file. It's very, very smooth, this one. Just across the whole fret, following the curve or the radius of the neck. Always wiping, always cleaning your file. Remove all the little bits of uh, filings there. And that virtually is it. That one is done, it's level, we've now got the curve back, I'm going to show you the thin blue line down the centre. And I'm going to finish it off, are we good there? Yeah we're good there. I'm going to finish it off with this file. Again, nice fine files, I've got a three mil side and a two and a half, I will go over with the three. This is just going to remove any burrs and put that nice rounded top on there. I'm going to wipe clean. Wipe the file clean. I'm going to go over to a two and a half mil side, and we are just going to go again. You see now that is now the best fret on the guitar because that's got a nice round top where a lot of the others are all flat. Um, and to finish off, we would just get some steel wool, give it a bit of a polish, that is now the best fret on the guitar. Now I will zoom in. That's the one I've just done there. Beautiful, nice and round, should be nice and level now. Absolutely. Absolutely beautiful. Best fret on the guitar. Two more little areas to do. Uh, I'm gonna crack on with that. Then I'm gonna move up to the big ones at the other end of the guitar. Um, once it's all done, I'll come back and show you the progress that we've made. And once that is done, by the way, we can start putting the guitar back together, we can reset the neck, get the guitar back together and it will be ready to either go back to its owner or it can be ready for me to put up for sale. That's it, that's the body finished and the neck finished and I defy you to find which three frets I've, five frets I've levelled. In fact you won't know, I don't even know, a couple round here and three up here. There you go, looks absolutely fantastic. So with the neck and the body now done, all the major work is done. What remains to be done now is I need to put the neck back on the guitar to reset it, which I'll, I'll do off camera. Um, I'll reset the neck and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the old strings on. I'm going to give them a clean, the, the flat wide strings so they don't dull anyway. The last absolutely yonks, they're easy to clean. I'm going to stick those back on. I'm going to set the intonation and everything, get the guitar set up. The most difficult thing to do right now is to set the truss rod right. Because I remember I did have to alter this. Um, to get it flat and I think I had to tighten it slightly so that means I've probably got to loosen it just a nudge but not too much because I don't want too much relief in here when I get strings on because if I've got too much relief in here when I've got strings on I've got to remove the neck again and get back at that knot you can't do it on the guitar you have to take this off the guitar it is a little bit of a pain I wish it worked a way around that but they didn't 
so it's something we have to put up with. I won't want to put too much relief in there. Right, I've got the tiniest bit of relief, in fact, oddly any. So I'm going to keep it like that. I'm going to put my neck on straight with the string tension. It's going to pull this neck up into a little bit of a bow that way, which is what we call relief. That's what I want to get. So I'm just going to take the tension off where it starts to tighten. I'm going to hold it there and I'm going to give it an eighth of a turn. And that's what I've done. And that is where I'm going to set it. And let's hope that the guitar gods are with me today. I know we've all got it. Um, and let's hope I've got that right first go and I don't have to keep removing it off the neck to get it right. And there you go, that is really good. So I'm going to crack on. So I have the bass back together. I've also got the problem with the neck sorted out. That string is not now at the top and this isn't like a mile up here. I've reset the neck so I've got it all level. One little problem, the action's a bit high. I have a little too much relief in the neck. The problem with guitars like this, uh, where you have to remove the neck to set the truss rod again, it means I've got to take the strings off again, take the neck off, then set the truss rod. Uh, it is a right bind to have to keep doing that, but there's no way around it, so that is exactly what I will do. The bass looks fantastic. I've not put the covers on, the pickup covers. Um, but it's all back together, it's looking absolutely fine. Once I've got this neck sorted, we're going to, we're going to be absolutely bang on with it. You'll notice the strings look new. They are the same strings that was on that were on before. But what I've done is I've given the strings a wipe with uh, what we well we'd normally use naphtha, but we don't get naphtha in England. It's like an American thing. But the closest thing we have to naphtha, well, it really is naphtha, is Zippo lighter fluid. Now we don't go muck it, chucking it all over the guitar. We take a a rag like so, or a cloth. Call it a cloth. I call it, call it a rag or a cloth. Cloth. What's it matter? And we'll just bang some on there and we'll take the string and we'll just wipe the string all the way through it. Get a couple of wipes and it removes any grime or dead skin that's floating left on them strings. And it shines them up a little bit. We've got it all looking new again. I've reset the pickups. Um, I don't know if you can see, but one of these pickups has a little chink in it there. A little chunk taken out. Uh, I thought I'd mention that. But the base is looking absolutely fine. Like I say... I'll reset, I'll set the neck proper tomorrow. It's just one of the things when um, the truss rod is at the far end of the guitar, you have to remove the neck to get to the truss rod. And you know, I, I obviously need to give it a, um, give it a little twist, uh, just to uh, sort it out, get it right. Uh, just one of the things we have to do is trial and error with these things. Um, so it's something all us guitar techs have to do. So I was setting the fender up yesterday and um, hit a snag. Um, and this is for you Lynn because uh, it's going to be difficult to explain because you don't really understand our intonation and that works on a guitar. So I'll try to explain as simple as I can. When we set up the guitar we need to move these saddles forwards and backwards. And we've got loads of adjustment and we have to adjust them to make the guitar tune in correctly. Now because of whatever gauge of strings these are, that means these strings are thinner than recommended or fatter than recommended. I need to move the saddles one way or another. And you'll notice here, that spring there under my finger is not long enough. So I need to replace that spring. Also two of the screws aren't long enough. You see, they're still inside the holes here. I need to get some longer screws and I can buy the longer screws. And I forget if I buy the correct screws for the instrument, we have to go to America for them and they're going to be about £25. But if I go to a machine shop in England and buy a set of screws which are the right length um, and right thread, I can get them for about £6. Springs probably get for about £4. So, we're not, so I'm going to go that route, but we've got to get them. Um, I can't finish the guitar until we've got them and you can't solve a guitar in that state with short springs and short screws. Uh, something I could only notice when I was setting it up, and I only started setting it up properly yesterday. So uh, couldn't uh, we, I couldn't let you know before. Uh, but in short, that is uh, what needs to be done. If I take, send you a guitar back now like that, when a buyer comes to look at it, saying that's not right, them screws aren't long enough, and them springs aren't long enough, and he ain't going to buy it, and you're not going to be able to sell it. So that's my opinion. Um, to be honest, I wish I had the parts because I could be bringing it back to you Sunday because two reasons. One, I could do with it out of the way. Two, I could do with the money. Um, got a lot, a lot of work on at the moment. I've got no room in here and I don't want to be, I don't have a £3,000 guitar sat in a workshop full of other guitars where things can get nudged and damaged. Not that it will because this actually goes under my bed. 
uh, but I just wanted to let you know that um, I need you to okay that I'll go and buy the springs I go and buy the screws and um, once they're here I'll swap them over I'm only going to charge a couple of quid for that you know it's going to take me an hour I'll charge off an hour um, it can't really well it can't be put it that's it I didn't want to charge you more but what can I do I've already spent this is an old day of my time um, you know which is you know which is fair enough, you know, I don't mind that, I did quote your price, and I'm happy with the price uh, but your guitar is not sellable when it's like that, I will put the old screws and the old springs in your guitar case um, so you've always got them there if in the future, the future buyer changes his string gauges, chances are he's going to want to move these back and bring them more back this way to make the intonation right um, but they will be there for him so it's not like we're actually modifying the guitar itself all we're doing is making it so we can set it up properly it's the way they go with these vintage instruments uh, you know we're not quite as uh, technically advanced as we are today so that's it that's all I've got for you I've got to crack on because I've got a load of work to do right guys long story short I had a big problem with intonation uh, on this bass I also got a uh, message from the owner the lady owner of this bass and uh, I'll forgive her ignorance because she doesn't know guitars and stuff like that but she more or less demanded the bass back and says won't be working and I'll just pay for and blah 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 but the thing is when I come to setting this up I realised there wasn't enough room for me to set the intonation right because the screws um, on the saddles were too short bear with me a second uh, the screws were too short to get the intonation right I had to move these saddles this way so I went and talked to the guy who put her in touch with me because he understands guitars to tell her that look Vic needs to do what he's doing and I'm, going to, I'm going to show you the length of the springs and the screws in relation to where they are now look how much longer that is now to set the intonation right look we're a centimetre out there that one was a centimetre out the next one was pretty much half a centimetre out, look how much shorter the springs are and the next one was also a centimetre out and the final one was a couple of millimetres out, just almost there so I had to go, these are the original screws I've got here in my hand and the intonation screws and the, and the springs, the springs were too short because I had to lengthen or shorten the string length now the thing was, I could not source any of these parts in England. I got some from America, they wanted 25 quid for four screws. So I thought, no, I'll go somewhere else. I did manage to source some from um, Hong Kong. And they've just come today. And they're the right thread. And I've got a big bag of them there. Cost me 14 quid. But she's only having four of them. So charging her a fiver for all this. I'm not charging her for the springs. And it's now all done, the intonation is bang on, these are set right, I will include the original springs back in the pack. And finally, we have the guitar all done. Um, it looks great with the covers back on. Everything looks wonderful. The neck has been reset, that wasn't set in straight, there was a hole in the fingerboard around here or around here that I repaired, you can't see that, you've seen it all in the earlier video. I've also lubricated these Tudin peg and cogs, uh, just with some, um, what do you call it, Vaseline type stuff. Uh, the guitar looks fantastic. There are some tiny blebs in the finishes. One there, one, I don't know if you can see them. I'm reluctant to put any cleaner on here, so I've not put any cleaner on here. I might just do some a bit of a wipe. Get that shiny a little bit more than that. Um, there is a little nick in there, this area. There are a few nicks here and there, but it's certainly in better condition than most of them I've seen on eBay. Very hard to value this, but I've had a look in the box looking at the registration card, and the registration card in there has 1983, 1973 printed on it. So this could well be a 1972 model. If that is the case, I would expect a little bit more for this, or I'd expect to definitely list it for a little bit more. Uh, still, that said, I'm not a seller or a dealer, so I can't really value this properly. I wouldn't have thought two and a half thousand pounds was too much to pay for this, you know, and I'd be expecting, you know, round about that amount. But 
Is £2,000 attractive to anyone? I don't know. End of the day, this is all up to Lynn to what she decides. If she does sell it for eBay though, she must be aware that there's going to be a 14% fee on top if it's a PayPal payment. There's 10% that eBay will take. So if you sell it for £2,500, eBay will want £250. Uh, they do do deals now and again where you can list something for just a pound only. I get that deal every month. So if, for instance, that came up and I put it on that deal, seller fee is £1, we could sell this for £2,500 and you'll get £2,499. You know, so we'll see where that goes. But that is all up to the owner of this guitar. She's been in contact with me today. She's been very, very generous. Uh, she is paying over what I was charging her. She says, if you want to, she says, I appreciate all the extra work you've done, which is fant fantastic. She says, if you don't want to keep the money, then donate it to a charity of your choice. I says, well, that's totally up to you, and thank you very much. But here is the bass. It is in fine, fine condition. The best I've seen from this era. Now, I've talked to some people who were interested in this, but they were reluctant to pay any more than £1,500 for it. Well, I told them basically to go and whistle. I said, because you're not getting this for a penny less than 2,000 quid. Uh, but then again, I do not know what it's worth. It could be worth £3,000 for all I know. I will leave this down, and I'll leave all this now with the owner. Um, if she can go and get a valuation somewhere else, absolutely fine, because there's people out there know more than I do. But like I say, I'm not a guitar seller by a dealer. Uh, I have no idea what it's worth. What I do know is that this guitar is um, very well set up now. It's in fine condition, one of the best I've seen. Uh, there are some... There's a few couple of lines in the bodywork, uh, but nothing, you know, nothing major. It's an absolutely fine looking guitar. If I was a bass player and I was after a Fender, this would be the type of Fender I would be looking for. So, what else can I tell you? I think that's really it. I think we've done all that needs to be done. We've said all we can say about this guitar. Um, it looks brilliant, it plays brilliant. Just to remind you that if someone comes to play this, there is a foam pad sitting on the top of the strings under this plate and for them to get the full effect of the strings uh, they need to remove that pad from there and you'll get the full uh, pluck of the string because like a dampener, it does tend to deaden the strings slightly so, so that's it, that is this one done uh, it is ready to go back, I'm going to get it all cased up with all its papers and everything with its original screws and everything in there, I'll take it back to Lynn and I wish her the best of luck in selling it and um, don't get ripped off or fobbed off, you know. So until the next time, be good to each other and I will see you soon.